Climate Finance asks the question, how are we going to pay for the global effort needed to address climate change? This video presents a brief overview of the Green Climate Fund and the state of climate finance post COP21. The UNFCCC has previously created numerous funds to tackle climate change. These include the LDC Fund, the Adaptation Fund, and the Special Climate Change Fund. However, it is the Green Climate Fund that seems to hold the most promise, established in Cancun 2010. Some basic facts. It is based in Songdo, South Korea. Its board consists of 12 members from developing countries, 12 from developed countries. Each member has an alternate, leaving us with the 48 members pictured here. The Green Climate Fund promises at least 100 billion US dollars each year from 2020 onwards to be put towards climate change. The money up until this year has been housed by the interim trustee, the World Bank. The board has promised the fund will be divided. 50% will go to adaptation, and 50% will go to mitigation. In regards to adaptation, the most vulnerable countries' needs will be prioritized. These include the least developed countries, small island developing states, and African states. The rest will go to the other developing countries, including the G77 plus China. How do countries receive this fund? Each country has a national designated authority or focal point that mobilizes bilateral and multilateral organizations, government agencies, NGOs, and the private sector to implement projects. These organizations are either called National Implementing Entities, or NIEs, if they're regional or national, or Multilateral Implementing Entities, if they're cross-border. For these organizations to access the fund, they first need to be accredited by the Green Climate Fund Board. Accreditation is based on environmental and social safeguards, fiduciary standards, upholding a gender policy, and analyzing for risk levels. Once approved by the Green Climate Fund Board, they will be able to make proposals to receive money based on the size of their project. This is how the Green Climate Fund is able to support implementation on the ground. Some organizations that have been accredited already are shown here. The European Bank, the World Bank, the Caribbean Community Climate Change Center, UNDP, the Asian Development Bank, and the Environmental Investment Fund in Namibia. Most institutions accredited so far have been multilaterals, as shown here. As of November 2015, eight projects have been approved for funding. This is how the Green Climate Fund hopes to reach the most vulnerable to climate change. It is always important to remember that these are the very people who contribute the least to global emissions. So there it is, a basic overview of the Green Climate Fund. However, there are still some important questions that need to be answered. For instance, who's going to pay for the Green Climate Fund? While well, countries have promised 100 billion US dollars, as of November 2015, only 10.2 billion US dollars has been raised. Furthermore, post COP21, developing countries are now encouraged to voluntarily contribute to the fund even if they have historically contributed little to climate change. While the Paris Agreement seeks a balance between adaptation and mitigation finance, there is no guarantee that 50% of funds will actually go towards adaptation. Does a Green Climate Fund give out grants or loans? Most vulnerable countries believe they should be grants, particularly because they contributed least to global emissions. How will we keep NIEs and MIEs accountable, particularly if you're attempting bottom-up adaptation? And what about when adaptation is not possible? Loss and damage is a topic currently being discussed and will hopefully have its own financial mechanism in the future. So there you go, a brief overview of the Green Climate Fund and the state of climate finance post-Paris.